Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create this cocoa inspired tortilla cake. I've used a 6 inch and an 8 inch to create this. So, with the 6 inch, I have a 6 inch board underneath the cake because this is going to be a top tier. Fill in with your buttercream. I've used hybrid buttercream, which is linked in the eye up in the right hand side of this video or in the description box below. Build a 6 inch and an 8 inch bottom tier and then create a crumb coat around the whole cake. Um, doesn't really matter what colour you make this, the buttercream is pretty opaque so when you go over it in white at the end you won't be able to see through to the colour underneath so no stress here. Pop it into the fridge to set for at least 20 minutes and then work on your bottom tier. My bottom tier cake is an 8 inch sitting on a 10 inch cake board. Give it a good crumb coat, bring that lip of frosting to the centre and let it sit in the fridge for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes you can pop on your final layer of frosting. This is still the hybrid buttercream recipe so it's half vegetable shortening and half butter. Starting at the very top and then working my way down to the side of the cake to the very bottom. I like to smooth mine down with an acrylic bench scraper. You can buy these on my website rosiesdessertspot.com. And then bringing in that lip of frosting back into the fridge she goes to set one more time. Follow the exact same steps with your 6 inch top tier. Once you've done frosting it and it's all neat, pop it into the freezer instead for at least 10 to 15 minutes. We'll be handling it with our hands later on and we don't want to dent or mess up the buttercream. After it's been resting in the freezer for 20 minutes, grab the 8 inch which has been in the fridge and then pop some dowels in it. These are cut flush with the very top of the cake and they're put in there to um, support the weight of your top tier. I've stuck it on with just a little bit of buttercream. Now I'm creating my fondant decorations. You can apply fondant directly onto buttercream. Uh, it sticks with a little bit of water. Just make sure that your fondant's not too heavy or too thick. The heavier it is, the more likely it is that it'll start draping down the cake. I've created some longer green logs to make the stem and then some teardrop shaped fondant pieces to make the colourful leaves. I've pressed them down with a fondant smoother just to give them a bit of a flat shape. Arrange them how you like, make sure it's okay for sizing and then pop them aside and cut out the, um, the guitar which is in the logo of the Coco movie. Uh, logo. Cut around it with a exacto knife. I've got like a really really sharp knife here, like a paring knife. That works too. And I've stuck on this piece of paper which has been printed with a little bit of shortening so it's not moving on my fondant which makes it a lot easier to cut. It's kind of like temporary adhesive when you add a little bit of shortening. Peel off your stencil and then pop two holes in the center. Now I'd recommend to let this dry in your canner for at least 20 minutes before you try to adhere it onto your cake with a little bit of water on the back. That way it doesn't misshape as you try to attach it. On either side I've popped my green stems and then with a little bit of water sticking on the leaves. I've chosen these colours because they're kind of Mexican themed if you kind of know what I mean. They're colourful, it's not like a, um, like a baby cake. Uh, that's, that's what I'm hoping anyway that you guys feel the same, but anyway, that was the intention. Take some fondant, roll it out nice and thin, and then cut out the name that's going to go on the top tier. So press down, give it a wiggle so the edges of the letter are nice and sharp and not kind of having any little frilly bits. And then tap the fondant out of the mould. Line it up, fix up the shape of the letters, let them set for maybe 10 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to decorate my skull, which is going to go on the other side of the cake. Using a glass as a template, cut around it and then maybe one fifth of it cut downwards. And that's going to be the teeth on our skull. Shape the sides so it's more of an oval rather than a circular shape. And using the back of a knife, indenting some teeth marks where the teeth shapes will be. I gave mine a bit of a roll on the skull section up top so that it became a little bit more oval. And then roll some purple pieces of fondant 
to create a ball and then um, make them flat with your fondant smoother. Do the same to create the nose, but then shape it along the side. You can do this on the counter as well if it doesn't stick to your smoother. Position it on your skull. Once you're happy with the positioning, adhere it with a little bit of water. I've rolled out some red fondant into a nice little thin log and then I'm just draping it over my uh, finger to create like a curled ring. Cut it at the edge of the skull and then stick it on with a little bit of water again. To make it a bit easier to decorate, I stuck with lines and circles for the whole decoration on the skull. The key here is to add as much colour as you can to it to make it really pop. In the centre I've added like a teardrop which is the same, um, the same shape that we used on the stem, just much smaller. Attach it onto your cake with a little bit of water. And my cake has come out of the fridge, so the icing is still nice and firm. Make sure that your icing is firm when you do this, by the way, when you're sticking fondant decorations on your cake. To go around, I've decorated with all these different kind of flowers. I've got blossoms, I've got, um, I believe they're called daffodils, or the sunflower looking flower. And I just stuck them on with buttercream at the very back. If you press the flower right in the center, it makes it look a bit a little bit more 3D because the petals come forward. Once you have your first layer on, start layering flowers on top of the other and make sure you have at least three different colors to really make this pop. I added some at the very top as well, layering them on top of each other. And again, pressing down the centre so that the petals kind of faced upwards and rose a little bit. You can add some final detailing. I felt it was a little bit empty above the name, so I added some more of those. And then this is a bunting. It's totally optional. I let my fondant set over three days, and that way it was nice and firm. If you're going to do a bunting, make sure that your fondant is rolled out at least a good four millimetres in thickness so that it doesn't break as well. And the holes I cut into these little pieces was using a circle piping tip. You can tie it over a skewer. Here I have some gold mirror and I cut um, the spikes with a hole at the very top. But a skewer does the trick perfectly fine as well. Tie a knot to secure them on there and then pop them into your cake. And you're done. And that is how you make the Coco inspired cake inspired by the movie Coco. I think the flowers at the base really makes this cake though. Even though it's pretty colourful, I think the flowers are my favourite part of the design. If you do recreate this or something similar, please tag us, Rosie's Dessert Spot on Instagram. We'd love to see what you guys are coming up with as well. Thanks again for watching, and if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to do so. We upload a new video every Tuesday. Bye for now!